In this session, we will discuss the type of clocks in HTA. So in HTA, uh, we will see what are this uh, type of clocks. One is gated clocks and another is virtual clock and other one is derivative clock. So uh, before uh, discussing about this, uh, so I hope you are all aware of the basic clock. So what is mean by clock? It is nothing but a uh, pulse. Okay. So with the help of this uh, pulse, taking this uh, reference uh, pulse, we will be um, uh, we will be giving our inputs and outputs, and we will be analyzing all the uh, timing constraints. Okay. So this this is basically clock. Okay. So it is a series of pulse. So there are three types of clocks. One is a gated clock, virtual clock, derived clock. So we'll see one by one. Gated clock. So a gated clock is a clock that is controlled by logic gates such as AND or or uh, other signal other combination logic. So the clock signal is enabled or disabled based on the output of the gating logic, which is typically depends on the control signal. So basically, a gated clock is uh, a clock which is controlled by logic gates like AND. So for example. Um, we can see this is a gated clock here uh, clock will be given to one input and at other input clock enable will be given so this is a uh, gated clock so here our clock will be given gated clock so the output will be getting our gated clock. So if clock enable is equal to one only, our clock will be uh, generated. Else clock will not be uh, generated. So for example, if clock enable is equal to one only, then for a system, the clock will be given. Or else if clock enable is equal to zero, for a uh, system, uh, here the output of uh, output will be equal to zero. So no clock will be given to a system, particular system. Uh, you can also keep OR gate like this. You can give one input as clock and another input as clock enable and you can uh, drag the output as uh, gated clock. Like that, uh, you can control the clock signal with using the combinational circuit. So the clock signal is enabled or disabled based on the output of the gating logic, which typically depends upon the control signal. So this uh, control logic will be written somewhere or it will be giving uh, it we will be getting this control logic from somewhere. So based on this control logic, uh, the output clock will be given. Okay. So what is the purpose of this gated clock? So basically the gated clocks are often used to save the power by disabling the clock signal to certain parts of the circuit when those parts are not in use. For example, if if this is a circuit, right? So in a whole big part, this is a small part part of the circuit. And uh, let's say, suppose at this particular time instant, you're not uh, utilizing this particular logic. Okay. So at this time of instant, you're not utilizing this logic, but the clock is uh, given to this logic continuously. The clock is given to this particular logic continuously but you are not utilizing this uh, particular circuit at uh, this time instant, but you are driving the clock. So you are uh, utilizing your power resources, right? So you basically, uh, there, it is a waste of power usage. So with the help of gated clock, we can save the power by disabling this clock source. If you use a gated clock and you know that, uh, and you are aware that this particular logic you are not using at this particular instant, then you can disable this clock by using uh, the clocking uh, gated clock technique and you can save the power by disabling the clock to this particular circuit right so like this uh, gated clocks can be useful okay so by gating clock unnecessary switching activities are prevented thereby reducing power consumption next so this is about gated clock now virtual clock so a virtual clock is an imaginary or hypothetical uh, clock signal used in HTA to model timing constraints for signal that do not have a physical clock due uh, driving them directly. For example, uh, if you see uh, all the timing constraints like a setup time check or it may be old time check, everything is done with reference to clock, right? In the previous videos also we have seen everything is done with the reference of clock right so if there is no clock how we can perform this all 
uh, whether it may be setup time, setup time check or hold time check or anything. How, uh, what, and all the timing parameters are done with the difference of the clock. If there is no clock, what is, how can we achieve this particular timing checks, right? So, if a circuit is having, or if a model is, uh, if, for this model, if you want to check uh, the timing constraints, but there is no physical clock present to this particular model, or no physical clock is fed to this particular model, how can you? Uh, calculate those parameters, timing parameters. So, with the help of virtual clock, uh, which is a imaginary or hypothetical clock, uh, which is used to model the timing constraints uh, for the modules which do not have a physical clock. So, the, with, with the help of virtual clock, you can uh, calculate the HTA timing parameters which uh, to the model which is not having a physical so you can take this virtual clock as a reference clock and you can calculate all the uh, timing parameters of the and uh, of that particular circuit or module so you can see the purpose of this virtual clock so virtual clocks are typically used to define the timing constraints for the input and output ports in the design so these constraints ensure that data signal arrives or depart the correct times related to the reference clock even if there is no actual clock signal driving the signal you are uh, basically here uh, you are calculating uh, signal arrival time and depart uh, time Le that is uh, setup time and hold time all that uh, uh, timing parameters of HTA you can uh, calculate with the help of this uh, you by taking this virtual clock as reference so this is the usage of virtual clock yeah you can see here so the setup time hold and hold time checks so the virtual clocks are used to perform setup and hold time checks on an input and output paths so they define the timing relation between the data signals and reference clock reference clock here it is uh, our virtual clock and no propagation since virtual clocks do not physically exist in the design they do not propagate through the circuit like actual clocks instead they are used use it solely to define the timing constraints since it is not a physical clock or actual clock it is just a virtual clock which is taken as a reference clock so there is no propagation of this clock throughout the circuit next so that's about uh, virtual clock now let's discuss about derived clock so a derived clock is a clock signal generated from an existing clock through clock division, multiplication, uh, multiplication or other logical transformations. So you can see here, so there will be original uh, clock present and with uh, on that clock we'll, we can perform clock division or clock multiplication and other logical transformations and the resultant clock is the derived clock. Okay. So for example, if there is a uh, clock coming from any source so if we perform any clock division or multiplication or any other uh, operations the resultant is called derived clock derived clock okay let's say suppose if there is 100 megahertz clock coming from a source okay so if you perform if you perform clock division and if we change the uh, frequency of this clock to 50 megahertz so this clock is called derived clock okay derived clock and this can we can feed it to any other model which uh, we want uh, where if we want uh, let's say suppose if we want uh, in a module there are two modules this module needs 100 megahertz clock and this module needs 50 megahertz clock right so what you can do is you can uh, give the original clock to this and you can uh, do clock division and you can provide 50 megahertz to this clock so this clock you are deriving to uh, 50 megahertz and giving it to the module b okay so like this you can uh, derive a um, you can achieve a derived clock right so the derived clocks are uh, common in designs where different parts of the circuit operate at different frequencies or phases. This we have discussed, right? So in a particular circuit, if two modules are, uh, if two modules want to operate at different frequencies, one one is wanted to uh, operate at 100 megahertz and other is operating at 50 megahertz, you can uh, derive a, derive a clock and you can uh, provide the particular uh, clock signal with that frequency. Coming to the purpose of derived clock, so the derived clocks allow the creation of multiple clock domains within a design, each with frequency and phase relationship to the primary clock. So there will be a, a primary clock and 
this primary clock is divided into multiple frequencies or phases uh, according to the requirement of that particular module so let's say suppose um, this is uh, this is of uh, one frequency one different frequency and this is of another frequency and this is of one phase and this is of another different phase so original clock is divided into four types in the same circuit let's say for example original clock is divided into four types so this is called clock domains okay so this is one clock domain with one frequency and this is another clock domain and this is one more clock domain and this is also one clock domain okay so like this there are four clock domains in this particular uh, circuit okay so the derived clocks allow the creation of multiple clock domains with a design each with frequency and phase relationship to the primary clock so this is useful for synchronizing operations that requires different clock splits next clock domain crossing so the derived clocks often lead to the multiple clock domains within a design so HTA must analyze the timing paths that cross these domains, ensuring proper synchronization and avoiding uh, and avoiding timing violations. So by uh, doing this uh, clock derivation, by performing this clock derivation, uh, there will be multiple clock domains created. There will be multiple clock domains created. We have already discussed uh, in our previous slide about this multiple uh, clock domain, right? What is mean by clock domain? different uh, frequencies clocks with different frequencies or different phases in the same circuit is called different clock domains okay so derived clocks often lead to a multiple clock domains within a design so HTA must analyze this timing paths cross uh, crossing these domains ensuring proper synchronization and avoiding timing violations let's say suppose if this uh, if a particular module a is is in one clock domain is working with one clock domain and module b in the same circuit is running with another clock domain okay so to ensure proper synchronization between the module a and module b there are some techniques which are called as clock domain synchronization cdc techniques so clock domain crossing techniques we will say so these techniques will be followed in the hta to maintain the synchronization between different clock domains in the uh, circuit which are operating with different uh, clock frequencies or it may be clock phases okay so uh, these techniques we will discuss in our uh, upcoming sessions what are this cdc techniques for maintaining the synchronization between two modules if two modules are communicating with each other uh, with different clock domains then how to achieve this cdc uh, how to achieve this uh, synchronization using cdc we will uh, discuss in coming to the summary so gated clock so a clock signal controlled by a gating clock, uh, gating logic used for power saving but requiring careful timing analysis to avoid skew and glitches and coming to virtual clock, a hypothetical clock used to define timing constraints for signals without a physical clock, ensuring proper timing relative to an external or reference clock and coming to derived clock, a clock generated from an existing clock used to create multiple clock domains within a design requiring careful analysis of clock domain crossing and skew. So we will discuss the clock domain crossing and skew concepts in our upcoming session. So that's all for this session. Thank you.